Hey guys, thanks for joining me again for another episode of my YouTube channel, Long Live the Brains. Today I'm going to continue the series on the effect of diet and its relationship to Parkinson's disease. Today I'm going to talk to you about a compound called uric acid or urate. Now you think, where have I heard that before? Well, you've probably heard it in relationship to a condition known as gout. Now gout is an inflammatory arthritis and it's related to elevated uric acid levels. So what happens when you have these elevated levels is that the uric acid tends to crystallize and those crystals will deposit in your joints, um, most commonly the joint in the big toe. And so if you go to your physician and are diagnosed with gout, he or she may start to ask you about your meat consumption. Well, why is that? And that's because um, uric acid is a breakdown product of purines, and purines are found in high concentrations in meats, especially red meats. So when you start talking about ways to kind of combat the symptoms of gout, uh, cutting down on your red meat consumption is a, a good way to do that. Well, another thing that uric acid is associated with is kidney stones. So it may seem, you know, gout, that's painful, kidney stones, that's no fun. Uh, uric acid, we, we should definitely cut down on our uric acid because it's not associated with anything good. However, there was a study that came out in 2008 and it looked at over 47,000 men, followed them over time, and specifically looked at the uh, content of uric acid in their diet. And so it basically looked at what foods they were eating, and we know that some foods are higher in uric acid, like red meats, and some are lower. And they came up with a, a dietary urate index. And they took these 47,000 men and divided them into five groups. So those with very low urate index, dietary urate index, all the way up to those with a very high a dietary urate index. And over the course of the study, almost 250 patients, uh, participants rather, developed Parkinson's disease. And in looking at those that did or didn't develop Parkinson's disease, they found that those in the highest dietary urate index group actually had the lowest incidence of developing Parkinson's disease. So the authors concluded that uric acid may have a protective effect in, in lowering your risk of developing Parkinson's disease. So why is this? Well, if you back up several years, there was a study done in 1994 that showed that um, uric, low uric acid levels are associated with increased oxidation of dopamine in nigrostriatal pathways. So let me break that down. In other words, what we're saying is that uric acid seems to function as an antioxidant. You've all heard of antioxidants. Um, an antioxidant in the pathways that are abnormal in Parkinson's disease. Now, since these studies have come out, uh, the two that I mentioned, there have been many, many, many other studies that have shown a relationship suggesting uh, your, uh, increased uric acid levels are associated with a decreased risk of Parkinson's disease. And if you've got Parkinson's disease, they uh, increased uric acid levels seem to be associated with a slower progression of the disease. So the logical next question is, well, um, why don't we just supplement with uric acid and we can all lower our risk of developing Parkinson's disease. And so there have been some studies that have tried to do that, but they haven't been very successful. Um, because we've learned that uric acid supplements, like if you just take it by mouth, um, it can't get across the blood-brain barrier. So we don't think it's able to get to the areas like the, uh, the nigrostriatal pathways so that it can do the work to prevent disease. Uh, so there's actually a study going on right now. It's called the Sure PD3 trial, where we're using a different oral supplement. It's a compound called Enosin. And that can cross the blood-brain barrier, and then that innocent is broken down into uric acid, and so it's where it needs to be, and it's able to carry out the function that we think that it does. So this study, as I mentioned, it's going on right now. It lasts for two years, and it's following patients, and we're looking at the progression of uh, symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So we're all kind of awaiting those results, and we're looking forward to seeing what they show, because potentially there may be an oral supplement 
that uh, can help slow the uh, symptoms of Parkinson's disease or even uh, decrease your risk of developing Parkinson's disease.